spent the last year watching what it looks like for Americans to demonstrate their First Amendment rights. But the police response to the Black Lives Matter protests last year was a world away on January 6th. Our nation Nathan Baca paints the picture. A tale of two protests. Compare Wednesday's storming of the Capitol, where Capitol Police gave ground to Trump supporting insurrectionists and federal police agencies tear gassing mostly peaceful protesters last June before President Trump's photo op near Lafayette Square Park. Maryland Congressman Kwese Mfume says he has an idea of why federal police agencies reacted differently. It begs the question why, and the only real reason I can come up with is it's a matter of race. Ohio Congresswoman and chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Joyce Beatty, was pepper sprayed during a Black Lives Matter protest in June. She shot this video Wednesday of a riot trash Senate parliamentarian's office. Uh, I compare it to what we saw with the overly aggressive uh, militarized response to Black Lives Matter. We shot this video June 1st, showing Capitol Police protecting the U.S. Capitol from Black Lives Matter supporters. Despite those protesters making no violent moves, two visible lines of Capitol Police stood guard, rather than getting overwhelmed by rioters as they did on Wednesday. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser demands answers from a future federal investigation. We must also understand why the federal law enforcement response was much stronger at the protest over the summer. Now, for many parents all across the country, Wednesday's violence at the Capitol led to some frank discussions with their children. Here's Tom Dempsey. I never thought I would have to have a conversation with my child about sedition and insurrection. Adora Williams, Tiffany Day, and Simone Walker, as well as their children, all live in Arlington. This week, the images and videos of the carnage led to personal conversations. I walked into my daughter's room and I kind of turned on the TV and I allowed you know, her to watch it um, and to take it in. It's the breach. That was utterly shocking to me. But for the three mothers, the talk soon focused on something their children noticed. My children pointed out almost immediately, you know, they automatically went to that, that difference between how this group was treated as opposed to the peaceful protesters. The scenes of law enforcement and rioters sparking questions while thinking back to the protests last summer following the death of George Floyd. The police were well prepared when it was Black Lives Matter with you know, bullet, rubber bullets and gas. She asked questions like, you know, well, why weren't National Guard, why, why were the National Guard not present? You know, well, well I, I, I too have that question. Their question is always, why? Why is it like this? Conversations coming after a chaotic moment in history with these three mothers hoping similar discussions come for other families. You know, I would hope that just as we're having our conversations, white parents are having their conversations. I think it's really important as it could really impact the trajectory of our kids' lives, how they view the world and how they interact with the world. Tom Dempsey, WUSA 9. I have a black male teenage child, and I'm not happy that I had to tell him, you need to stay in the house. Ahead, the fear in D.C. is so raw, so real, that some people are leaving town. Others are prepared to be stuck inside their homes. And the streets of D.C. don't look the same. How security is changing ahead of the inauguration.